Did Donald Trump directly conspire with Vladimir Putin and Russia to influence the 2016 election? It's an important investigation. It's certainly possible. We don't know yet for sure. But this much is clear. It is a major mistake to place all of the focus on Russia collusion, Russia collusion, Russia collusion. We know that Donald Trump's team has colluded with Israel. We know that Trump's team has colluded with the United Arab Emirates. We know that Trump's team has colluded with Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has been uh, a very great friend and a big purchaser of equipment and lots of other things. And one Recently, we learned of yet another secret Trump Tower meeting. And this one, according to The New York Times, was arranged by none other than the Blackwater founder, Eric Prince. He is, of course, the brother of the education secretary, Betsy DeVos. He has been a shadow advisor to Donald Trump on the campaign and since Trump took office. Eric Prince was the guy who was pitching Donald Trump on the idea of privatizing the war in Afghanistan. He also was involved with this plot to offer Trump private intelligence services to circumvent the influence of the deep state. Um, Eric Prince also was a major donor to Trump's election campaign, along with his mother, Elsa. They were very serious shadow players. Also at this Trump Tower meeting was George Nader. He's an American citizen and has a long history of being an emissary of sorts uh, for the United States in the Middle East, going back to Bill Clinton, George W. Bush. He also worked with Eric Prince at Blackwater. And, oh, George Nader also is a convicted pedophile in the Czech Republic and has faced similar allegations here in the United States. So George Nader was there also. Why? Because he works as an advisor to the Emirati royals, and he also has very close connections to Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. In the probe into Russian meddling in the U.S. election, George Nader appears to be the witness who keeps on giving. The Lebanese-American businessman's ties to the United Arab Emirates are well known, but according to a New York Times report, Nader also has previously undisclosed ties to Russia. There was also an Israeli guy at this meeting. His name is Joel Zamel. And Zamel was there supposedly pitching a multi-million dollar social media manipulation propaganda campaign. Zamel is a co-founder of a company called the Psy Group. That's P-S-Y, like psychological or psyops, the Psy Group. That company boasts of employing former Israeli intelligence operatives. Now, Mr. Zamel's lawyer denies his client prepared anything or offered anything to the Trump campaign, but according to the Times' reporting, this guy Zamel was paid two million bucks. Now remember, Eric Prince, George Nader, the Emirati Royals, they were all present in the Seychelles when Eric Prince traveled there in January of 2017 at the invitation of the Emirati ruler, Mohammed bin Zayed. And while Prince was there, he meets this guy, Kirill Dmitriev. And Kirill Dmitriev just happens to be the CEO of the Russia Direct Investment Fund. For those of you who have not been following this story, it's a $10 billion plus sovereign wealth fund that was created by the Russian government under Vladimir Putin. Fast forward to Eric Prince's testimony before the House Intelligence Committee a few months ago, and Prince tells them, I just had a beer with Dmitriev. Uh, we discussed how Stalin and the United States worked together in World War II to defeat the Nazis and how we could do it again. Russia, the United States, opposing ISIS. That's it. Prince also told the congressman that his only role in Donald Trump's campaign was as a high-end donor and a guy who had a yard sign out for Trump and Pence. If this Trump Tower meeting that took place in August of 2016 was as the New York Times reports it, then Eric Prince is potentially going to get hit with a perjury charge or more. Prince was also recently interviewed by the special prosecutor, Robert Mueller. And George Nader? He's supposedly a cooperating figure now in that investigation. He's done multiple interviews with Mueller's team. George Nader has also appeared in front of the grand jury. The August 3rd meeting is sort of the beginning. Uh, before then, George Nader didn't know the Trump campaign and they didn't know George Nader. But after that, he begins to have a series of high-level meetings with Kushner, with Bannon, 
with General Flynn. There's one major common link that runs through the agendas of all of the participants in this Trump Tower meeting. And it's one that's gotten very little attention. And that is their shared hatred of Iran and their desire for regime change. So while all of this is going on, while that meeting happened at Trump Tower and then a few months later, the Seychelles meeting, George Nader had been pitching a secret plan to the Saudi royals wherein they would bankroll a campaign to target Iran with acts of economic sabotage and disinformation. As the New York Times reported, Nader was promoting a plan to use private economic warfare, which he viewed as, quote, the key to the overthrow of the government in Tehran. At the same exact time, Nader and Eric Prince were also developing a proposal for the Saudis, where the Saudis would pay them $2 billion to run a mercenary force that would fight the Houthis in Yemen. The Houthis, of course, are forces that Eric Prince, the Saudis, the Israelis, the Emiratis all characterize as just Iranian proxies. Back in 2010, I obtained a secret recording of Eric Prince giving a speech in front of a private audience at the University of Michigan. And in that speech, Eric Prince expressed disdain for the Geneva Convention. He said something like, these people that we're fighting against don't know where Geneva is or that there was a convention there. Eric Prince also called the people who were fighting against the United States in Afghanistan, Iraq, Pakistan, barbarians who crawled out of the sewer. Places like Yemen and Somalia. Somalia has had uh, rather Yemen. Now this speech might be hard to hear because the person who recorded it had to conceal the recording device. But in that speech, Eric Prince painted a global picture in which Iran is, quote, at the absolute dead center of badness. The Iranians, Eric Prince said, want that nuke so that it is again a Persian Gulf. And Eric Prince proposed, and remember, this was 2010. He proposed that armed private soldiers from companies like his former Blackwater empire be deployed in nations throughout the region to target Iranian influence, specifically in Yemen, Somalia, and Saudi Arabia. Eric Prince said, quote, the Iranians have had a very sinister hand in these places. You're not going to solve it by putting a lot of uniformed soldiers in all these countries. That recording was from eight years ago. Eric Prince was pitching this idea about attacking Iran by using mercenaries, private contractors, and now here we are with this Trump Tower meeting. Now, nothing we're hearing about this meeting is particularly surprising, but it's very relevant. And it makes perfect sense why Eric Prince would have assembled these particular players with Donald Trump Jr. at Trump Tower. This is Israel's agenda. This is the Saudi agenda. This is the Emirati agenda. This is Eric Prince's agenda. And as we see clearly from Trump's time in office, this has become the Trump agenda. Trump's first visit as head of state was to Saudi Arabia. Trump unilaterally destroyed the Iran nuclear agreement. We know that Jared Kushner is alleged to have shared information from the presidential daily briefing with Saudis, just as Mohammed bin Salman was allegedly beginning his deadly purge of his domestic political opponents. We know that Eric Prince has been involved with private security mercenary operations in Yemen. We also know that Eric Prince has ties to Israeli intelligence operatives. And we know that Eric Prince has had a long relationship with the crown prince of Abu Dhabi and has offered that prince mercenary services as well. The Washington Post, which broke that story about Eric Prince and the Seychelles, said that Prince was there to establish a back channel of communication with Russia, and this is important, on whether Russia could be persuaded to curtail its relationship with Iran, including in Syria. So what's the through line here? The central one, at least, is not really about Russia, but about Iran, about Israel's agenda. Just like when General Mike Flynn was on the phone with the Russian ambassador. What was the real point of that call? Flynn was asking Russia to support Israel's position on settlements 
at the United Nations. Mike Flynn was asking Russia to directly help Israel and in the process to undermine the then president of the United States, Barack Obama. This meeting at Trump Tower appears to have been primarily about Iran, not just support for Trump's presidential campaign. We only know a tiny bit about what went on behind closed doors, and hopefully we're going to learn more. But one of the consequences of the endless months spent narrowly focused on Russia, 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 has been that other lines of investigation and inquiry regarding other countries has been relegated to sporadic reporting at best. The case for active, documented collusion with the Saudis, the Emiratis, the Israelis, and the Trump campaign, the Trump team, it's very strong. I would argue that at this point, it's much stronger than the collusion case regarding Russia. These issues and the role of Eric Prince, the Saudis, Emiratis, Israelis, should be a massive scandal. It implicates a lot of people, including very influential people, including prominent think tanks who are bankrolled by these nations, Saudi Arabia, Israel, the Emirates. It actually hits the elites in Washington from both parties. Eric Prince is a player in all of this. He's not the central figure, but he's emerging as a pretty important player. He should be aggressively questioned under oath as part of both the criminal and congressional investigations. Yes, Eric Prince may well have committed perjury, but that's certainly not the extent of it. Eric Prince clearly has information about the roles that these powerful nation states have taken on in American electoral politics. We shouldn't force everything into the box of Russia, 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 especially when the evidence is so overwhelming that there are also motives relating to Iran or to Israel that may explain part of the agenda that these nations and Eric Prince were pushing when they embarked on a campaign to secretly support Donald Trump's election.